Hey everyone, this is S.M. Pratt, and today we're going to change it up and do a little Magic the Gathering. Yes, I do collect Magic. Yes, I'm one of those weird guys who just collects and I don't really play the game. I grew up during the Urza Saga, Nemesis, 7th Edition. Those are some of the sets I remember from my childhood. And I don't really see a lot of people doing binder collections of Magic. I had a lot of fun putting this binder together. This is my Four Horsemen binder. We'll take a look at the other sets in separate videos. Today we're going to start with the least climactic. Of the four horsemen what i'm gonna try to do here because i know most people are pokemon collectors i'm gonna try and just give you some commentary translate some of the value that i see and you know just give a little context art appreciation you can see the whole sets or all four of these sets eventually starting with this guy right here amnesia so right out of the gate this is quintessential magic i really like the contrast of magic and pokemon we got a macho protecting a flower from the rain and then over here we got a guy with a hole in his head so there we go starting it strong with Mark Poole, one of the most iconic artists in Magic. What I really like about Magic, it's the other side of the coin. It's definitely much more dark, but also it's more intricate, very detailed, very realistic. This guy right here, this is something you're not going to see in Pokemon. And I like that. It gives me that same whimsical value that Pokemon does. It's just the other side of the coin. Now, I know some of these cards are playable, like Ball, Lightning, Blood Moon. I know the basics, like the energy cost and then the attack. I think these are like what? Like these... 20 30 dollar cards nothing too crazy here in this set and then next up we have a girl who's bleeding out of her eyes what do we want to do here we got a little frog that stubbed its toe in pokemon then we got a girl who's dripping blood from her eyes so there it is another low contrast for magic and pokemon gonna be a lot of very intricate dark themes here's probably a good example of what i mean with the detail of magic cards you know something like this in pokemon Typically, you have a species and then a background. I'm not trying to downplay, you know, what Pokemon brings to the table. But this is just another take. You know, it's another style of art. Very detailed. You know, this card right here. Not really a crazy card or anything, but that artwork, it just looks like an actual piece of art that they just put on a card. Then we have a couple others here. We have a plant devouring something, some cave people, and then another popular card from the set, City of Shadows. Another great example of a very detailed piece. And then here we have another nice landscape. Those who know I'm a sucker for landscapes. This gives me like farmstead vibes from Alpha. One of my favorite artworks. I just, I don't know what it is about landscapes. I'm just drawn to them. And then we have a human heart suspended above a swamp. Let's do another little contrast here. Keep the water theme going. We got Pikachu on a surfboard having fun with his friends, smiling, enjoying the nice ocean and then here we have a human heart somehow suspended in the woods at least the title is very correct dark heart of the woods so there you go then next up we got deep water we have a guy i think being killed by a machine name checks out diabolical machine and then speaking of death we got a whole group here this looks like a cult is that jack sparrow this is what happens when you join cults look at this guy he regrets everything this is the final end point of most cults right there you end up drowning then we have dust to dust we have a demonic creature eater of the dead he likes to eat the dead guys there it is let's do now a little contrast got some jump pluffs hanging out with the snowman having fun this guy right here likes to eat dead people then we got a girl getting ready for a good charlotte concert in 2007 got some erosion happening and then oh we got an exorcist that's nice and friendly i do like this style though who is this drew tucker really like that style kind of gives me goya vibes you know that actual artist goya now this one, so something interesting about magic also, especially early vintage magic, you have a lot of religious themes that you won't see today. You know, in Pokemon, we had Sabrina's Gengar. They censored those, you know, those crucifix gravestones when it was, you know, released in English. Another example right here. This is something, anything with religious symbols, that's a no today. So it's cool to see that because it's a different perception back then. I don't know what it is with Joker's. This is going to be a really obscure reference, but I have like binders and deck boxes with Jokers from the late 90s. It was like some brand with Jokers. You know, hit me in the comments if you if you remember that. That's like a super obscure. Oh, here we go. We got Fire and Brimstone again. A couple of jump fluffs hanging out in the snow, building a snowman. Literal hell. Literal Fire and Brimstone. So there you go, guys. Then we have a dragon. Kind of looking like Charizard. Okay. I can understand that. Might be related to Charizard there. Then we have a fisher. We have a flood. I've seen that in real life about a year ago. Area where I play hockey. This is like a snapshot of what I actually saw. Found a youth. 
Frankenstein's monster, this guy, part of the tree is the tree. Another great example of a detailed piece. You can just see this as an actual piece of art hanging on your wall, but there it is as a trading card. Giant shark, always get this confused with deep water. I don't know if they might be cousins. Then we got Goblin Caves, Goblin Digging Team, Goblin Hero. Goblin is a very popular creature you're going to see over and over throughout Magic the Gathering. And then we have Grave Robbers. Oh, here we go. We got some flippers doing what they do, stealing their merchandise, getting ready to put it up on Instagram in a raffle. Then we got Hidden Path, getting Fern Gully vibes from this one. Great example of that detail. Now, speaking of Goya, this, is, this has got to be inspired by Goya. This looks like, what's the name of that? That guy devouring Saturn. I think that's what it's called, devouring his son. Saturn devouring his son. Very iconic piece. It's a very crude painting of a guy devouring a figure that looks just like this. There he is again. Drew Tucker said it earlier. I don't know if he took inspiration to Goya. Maybe it's just me. Let me know if you get that same vibe, but that's what I'm getting from this. And then if Fire and Brimstone was enough, that was enough. We're going to do a little Fire Blast and turn up to Inferno here. That was enough heat for you. Then we got this guy. He's all right. This guy's mild. Oh, Land Leeches. Very popular. Don't know the name of the card this reminds me of. It's like a girl in bondage. Is it in Legends? Someone tell me in the comments. This gives me that same vibe. Some girl thinks she has wings. It's like a side view of her. Anyway, moving on, we have this 10-10 guy. Actually, this is probably a great example to explain how I misunderstood not only Magic, but Pokemon. I think for everyone who grew up with Pokemon, we thought Charizard was so powerful because he had 100 attack, 120 HP, but in reality, he wasn't that playable. That's this guy right here. 10-10 is like 100 attack, basically. This guy looks super powerful, but he has a high cost. Another one was that Sky Shroud Behemoth. I remember that guy had a 10-10, but I think he came in like faded or tapped or something. Horrible playability-wise, but as a kid, you see those big numbers, and you're like, oh my god, this is super powerful. But in reality, probably not that playable, just like Charizard. Then moving along, we got Living Armor, Lurker. A lot of people there on E4. Then we have some Mana Clash. This guy right here, this Mana Vortex. This is what I think of when I think of the dark. I actually thought about buying, I think the original art was available recently uh, through Heritage, if I remember correctly. Very iconic piece. Gives me like Time Walk vibes. That one I really like. That's, that's what I think of when I think of this set. Then we have Marsh Gas, Marsh Goblins, Marsh Viper. The whole Marsh family is present. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We have a guy being burned at the stake. We have the Martyr's Cry. Also, bonus points. We have a crucifix in the background with an upside-down crucifix as well for the Edgelords. This is a great example of something that even if it's not on the reserve list, I highly doubt this would ever be reprinted. Watch it, watch it be in a newer set. But point being that some of these themes are too extreme for today. And even if they aren't on the reserve list, I think, you know, a lot of them, for example, like I think Jihad from Arabian Nights is a great example. There's no way that card's going to be reprinted. This one, similar one, high risk to probably reprint that today. I think this one is another popular card. Correct me if I'm wrong, players. No idea what this guy is doing here. Then we have a brain that is apparently electric type. And moving on to this guy. Is he holding a unicycle? Is he an OG hipster? These people look like they're out of a tool video. This guy's all right. Not too bad. I could see him in a Disney movie. Oh, here we go. Look at this. This guy's like the internet gentleman. This dude was tipping his fedora before it was cool. And then we have an orc general. Really like this art again. Drew Tucker. Really like this style. Then we have... Is that Pokemon? Oh, no. Pikeman. Okay. All right. Got excited there for a second. Another iconic artwork from the set. This is something else that comes to mind when I think of the dark is the Preacher card very popular this also kind of gives me oh, is it time twister something from alpha i get a similar vibe probably the same same artist well there you go there's some nightmare fuel we got rag man we do a little contrast again who do we want to do who do we want to do here we do a little stub toe stub toad poly toad and then this nightmare fuel look at that little happy face stubbed his toe this guy he's coming to do i don't even i don't even want to know what his what his goals are in life Moving on, we have Riptide, a sword. This is kind of cool. Of course, there's got to be some little... You see those little eyes there? Look at that. I'm like, oh, this is nice. Got a little light, a little hope. Nope. Some dude in there waiting to get you. 
Waiting to Eat Your Dreams, really cool art here. Scarecrow, really like that style. Man, that's really nice. Let me zoom in on that. That's a really cool style. This gives me like, okay, 90s people grew up with scary stories you tell in the dark. That's what that looks like to me. Speaking of this too, this looks just like scary stories you tell in the dark. Really like that style. And then we have a couple others here. I don't know, what is it with heads in the water? It's like the second person we've seen with their head out of the water. That lady's paranoid about something. That's a really cool, really like that art. Really ominous, cool design. This is super, super realistic. It just looks like a picture. Then we have this guy, was he casting a spell? Then we have a slug that's spitting. And then a couple other mild ones. Oh, here we go. Amy Weber. There it is, guys. Amy Weber is my favorite artist. Time Walk is my favorite card. I, I can't articulate why. Like, when I look at Time Walk, it reminds me, you know, talk about Tool Music videos. It just reminds me of the 90s for some reason. I just love her style. You know, you can spread out thousands of Magic cards. I can always pick out the Amy Weber cards, especially from the 90s. Just, I just love what she does. It, for some reason, just speaks to me. I really like everything her whole design i've i've yet to see a card that she's done that i really that you know i don't appreciate so there it is amy weber is always one i'm going to pause on then we got a couple other scary stories you tell in the dark maybe she has a little spider spider eggs on her cheek somewhere then we got this guy what is it, his birthday <laughs> being stretched to death there who, who do you want to compare here we got there's a little happy little happiness for you a little sun little rainbow this dude being spread apart by some zombies then we have a tower of, can't pronounce that word, not going to try. Then we have a couple others. I think this one is also, I don't know if that's the playable one. I think we already went through the playable one. Then we have, I don't even know who this guy is. Is he like Freddy Krueger's cousin or something? Again, scary stories you tell in the dark. And then a few other cards to end us off with. So there it is, guys. That is the dark really appreciate the contrast that magic brings to the table i like the other side of the coin you know you got to have both sides it is much darker it is more explicit and i like that because it's something pokemon can't offer but at the same time a lot of this to me is nostalgic again we'll go through all the other sets we're gonna do all these we'll do antiquities we'll do uh, arabian nights and then of course legends which is my favorite got to show off some amy weber right there at the end but Hopefully that was useful. Again, I am definitely not an expert in magic at all. I just appreciate the art. And hopefully, you know, for Pokemon collectors, you have a new appreciation as well. So there it is, guys. You know the deal. Let me know how you feel. It's pretty much it. Till next time.